Hey, what's up folks? How's it going? This is Wadjo. Hope you guys are all doing well. And these days, the boundary between an ultra portable laptop and a large format tablet are becoming more and more blurred thanks to the new iPad Pro that just came out a couple of days ago. So I'm going to take this opportunity to actually do a full-on comparison between the capabilities of what you get with an iPad Pro compared to probably one of the most popular laptops you can get, the 2015 version of the MacBook Air. So we're going to be taking a look at the ins and outs of both these two machines and see which one is right for you. So let's get right into it. Now from a price perspective, if you get the base model of the iPad Pro, it is going to cost you a little bit less than what you would get with the base model of the 13 inch version of the MacBook Air, which retails for around $1,000. But you do have to keep in mind that the pencil and indeed the keyboard is not included in the price. When you get the iPad Pro, they're separate purchases. And if you choose to get the pencil and the Apple keyboard for the iPad Pro, it's going to all together cost you an extra $270 on top of your $800 price tag. So that brings it very close to what the stock version of the MacBook Air costs. Now, as you can see, I actually don't have the iPad Pro keyboard. I'm actually using a keyboard made by Logitech, which I think is a little bit better, even though it's a little bit thicker and more sturdy than the official keyboard, but it's a lot better in terms of typing because it's a lot more rigid. You have a decent amount of key travel and it's a very conventional layout. In terms of the keyboard configuration, it's also LED backlit, just like the keyboard we find on the MacBook Air. Now, ergonomically, if you do a lot of typing, you are gonna definitely prefer the keyboard on the MacBook Air. It is slightly larger than the Logitech keyboard for the iPad Pro. Additionally, you also have a, probably one of the best trackpads in the business. Although it's not the Force Touch trackpad, it's still using that mechanical hinge system. But in terms of responsiveness and everything like that, the uh, fine level of control you have is fairly fantastic. And plus, you're running the full version of Mac OS 10. And on the iPad Pro, it's running basically just a version of iOS that's been optimized for the iPad Pro. One of the cool features about it is that you do have a split screen capability so you can do a little bit of multitasking if you want to do that but again in terms of the variety of work and the sheer capabilities and the large app library there's really no comparison between ios and mac os 10 so therefore most people who want to get some serious work done are probably going to opt for a uh, full-on mac os 10 a machine rather than going with a machine that's running ios now uh, there's a couple of factors where the ipad pro really excels and that's for people who like to write things down physically using the Apple Pencil. It's probably one of the best stylus out in the market. It's extremely responsive and it's specifically designed for the iPad Pro. And there's a couple of cool things about it that makes it very natural to write with. Firstly, there's actually a pair of tilt sensors built into the tip of the pencil, which will change the brush stroke effect depending upon what apps you're using. And with all these intuitive features, the iPad Pro therefore becomes a more compelling option for anybody that wants to physically write something down on a physical screen. So it's great for users like artists or designers. Now physically the iPad Pro is a slightly smaller from a footprint standpoint but not by much. They actually occupy more or less the same amount of space and in terms of weight and thickness uh, the iPad is very impressively thin only measuring about 6.9 millimeters and weighing at just around 713 grams for the Wi-Fi version versus the 13 inch MacBook measures about 3 millimeters by 17 millimeters in terms of its thickness and in terms of weight it's quite a bit heavier almost twice the weight at one point three five kilograms now in terms of connectivity options you're very limited on the ipad pro basically you have a headphone jack and a lightning cable for data transferring and indeed charging now on the air you pretty much have all the essential connectivity you'll ever need you have thunderbolt 2.0 connection two usb 3.0 connection as well as an sd card slot now on the camera department uh, the ipad pro completely destroys the uh, macbook the macbook has been using the same old 720p facetime camera for years we have eight megapixels stills and 1080p video at the rear facing camera on the iPad Pro and indeed we have uh, the same kind of 720p 30 fps camera at the front of the iPad as well. Now the funny thing is in terms of the actual speakers the iPad Pro actually has four individual speakers and I think the fidelity of the sound that you get is actually a little bit better than the audio quality that you get out of the speakers of the MacBook Air so take a listen and judge for yourself.
Now, moving on, let's talk about the displays on both these two devices. Now, obviously, in terms of resolution and overall capabilities, the iPad Pro completely wipes the floor with the MacBook Air. That's probably one of the weakest parts of the MacBook Air. In terms of actual resolution, you're looking at 2732 by 2048 on the iPad Pro. It also has a PPI count of 264. The 13.3 inch MacBook Pro has a native resolution of 1440 by 900, and that has a PPI count of only 128. It's also a TN panel, so unlike the IPS LED backlit display, the colors are not as well saturated and as contrasty, and the view angles suffer quite a bit as well, especially if you're viewing it from extreme oblique angles, versus you can pretty much view the iPad in any angle and have a fantastic viewing experience. Now, internally, both actually have a dual core processor. Now, obviously, we have the custom design Apple A9X chip on the new iPad Pro, which is a dual core chip clocked around 2.2 gigahertz, and it also has the M9 Motion coprocessor with four gigabytes of RAM. We're using Intel fifth generation Core i5, a dual core chip that has hyper threading on the MacBook Air, and that's clocked around 1.6 gigahertz, and it can also turbo up to a higher frequency if you do need it. And in terms of RAM, the uh, stock version of the MacBook Air that we have comes with four gigabytes of DDR3 memory clocked around 1600 megahertz. Now, just for fun, I kind of tested out the CPUs on both of these two platforms using Geekbench. And as you can see, they're actually quite similar. In terms of the actual single core processing, the Apple A9X chip actually beats the Intel Core i5 chip that we have on the Air by 3200 points versus we're scoring under 3000 points on the Air. But in terms of the multi-core processing, the i5 is faster, scoring over uh, 5800 points versus 5400 points on the iPad Pro. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about is battery performance. In terms of capacity itself, the iPad Pro comes with a 38.5 watt hour lithium polymer battery, versus you're looking at about 54 watt hour on the 13 inch version of the MacBook Air. And in terms of testing them both out, I just did our standard video loop test, played a video on both devices, had the Wi-Fi off and just had the screen brightness to about 50%. And here are the results over here. One of the best things about the MacBook Air is that battery performance is absolutely insane. It's well illustrated illustrated over here getting over 13 hours 41 minutes almost 14 hours of a battery life versus the iPad Pro got about 9 hours 23 minutes which certainly isn't bad but if you're in it for battery performance the Air is still one of the best products you can get if battery endurance is important for you now realistically you can definitely get around 10 hours of web browsing and general usage on the iPad Pro which is certainly acceptable and uh, matches on what the standards iPad can do as well but really on that guys that that's really it. Now, if you haven't seen our Surface Pro 4 versus iPad Pro video, definitely check that out. Uh, there'll be a link in the description for that. And uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, but really, other than that, thanks again for watching and we'll see you later. Take care.